Greetings and welcome to the final part of our mini series on the smart money concept. We are going to explore two remaining ideas today. Using the initial balance and dividing your trading day by sessions. We will conclude the series with examples of confirmations for opening a trade. Since this video summarizes all smart money concept techniques, we will note how other SMC concepts can be used as we explain these last two principles. Initial balance is an interesting but often overlooked technique. By definition, the daily initial balance consists of the high and low of the first hour after the market opens. In ATAS, you can use an indicator with the same name, initial balance. Let's add it to this Bitcoin chart. I'm going to indicators and adding initial balance to the chart. We won't use IB multiples. This is a technique from a market profile and is used to determine day types. We are only interested in the range of the first 60 minutes. So we will turn off all the levels with multiples or set each one to the color transparent. We do the same for border color and fill color. If you've done this, you will be left with only these two horizontal lines on the chart. Of course, you can draw the initial balance yourself every day. It's very simple. So I will turn off the initial balance indicator for now and use the highlight Y tool. On the 30 minute chart, I will plot the high and the low range of the first hour. When I turn on the initial balance indicator, the levels from the indicator will overlap with the edges of the highlight Y band. Now, how can you use initial balance? This technique is based on the insight that if an instrument is in a trend, any move in the opposite direction is just a correction. And during the day, the price will return to at least the opposite side of the range determined by the initial balance levels. So look at this Bitcoin chart. This is daily and Bitcoin is in a downtrend since the beginning of June. So when we get back to the 30 minute chart, we will be looking for the returning to the initial balance or even to the opposite side of the initial balance. This is the initial balance we placed at the chart and see how the price went against the trend to the uptrend. So we could have targeted initial balance high or initial balance low. This could have been our first attempt, which would end with a stop loss. However, this second entry would have been really successful, entering short here and targeting either initial balance high or initial balance low. If this still sounds complicated, let's look at a few more examples. So this is Nasdaq daily chart and look at this wonderful uptrend. Now each of this daily candle, which opens here, then created lower wick and closed above the open was a great opportunity for longing. Here, for example, here, here, or here, and here. For example, this downward movement creates the bottom wick. And that is the part of the price development we are interested in. The low is usually lower than the open. So if you patiently wait for the low of the day and the price reversal, you can open a position in the direction of the trend and target the opposite side of the initial balance. And here, look at the opposite direction. Look at the series of the red candles. Each one has an upper wick too. This was, for example, a great opportunity for shorting. I'm going to plot here a vertical line and make it global so that we see it at the lower time frame too. So this is the day I was talking about. We can use either the initial balance indicator or draw initial balance by hand by using the highlight Y tool. Let's click at the high of the first hour and the low of the first hour. So this is the initial balance. And as you can see, you were waiting for a good opportunity for shorting. 
targeting the opposite side of the initial balance, the initial balance low. For example, here you see the liquidity at this double top formation. If I draw a line here, you see that the price went slightly above this level, took out the liquidity here and then started to moving downwards again, continuing the downward trend. If you had opened a short position here at the close of this candle, you could have targeted the initial balance low. You would have respected the ongoing trend and had an excellent target that the price is very likely to reach. You can use other smart money concept techniques to enter, such as order block, fair value gap, liquidity, or as we will show in a moment, high or low of session. So I spoke here about the liquidity and certainly this is the fair value gap here. Low of this candle is higher than the high of this third candle. So this is the fair value gap and the price entered it for a while and continued in a downtrend. This is a Swiss franc chart and this is a very nice uptrend during this day. So you could have anticipated that the price will continue in the uptrend. I will draw initial balance again. So it's the low of the first hour and the high of the first hour. And look at this. You see here the fair value gap between these candles, for example. So this was a good opportunity for entering the long position or there was a order block too. Order block is the last candle of the opposite direction prior to the creating the swing low or the candle before the creation of the swing low. So this is the order block and the same. When I draw it, you see that there was a very nice reaction to it. This is the candle I'm talking about. You could have entered long position here and targeting the opposite side of the initial balance zone, which is at this level. By the way, the tiniest gaps between the candle close and open are the best. I mentioned it in the second part of our Smart Money Concept mini-series. And check closing of this candle and opening of the next candle. And this tiny space is the gap between the candles. So it was very probable that the price would revisit this area. That's why we waited for the fair value gap and the order block here. And finally, initial balance can also be used as support and resistance. In an uptrend, this is the S&P 30 minute chart. We are longing the reactions to the initial balance. Let's draw the initial balance here with a highlight Y tool. This is a low of the first hour and this is the high of the first hour. And after this movement up, price revisited the area and created new high. Initial balance is an excellent target that the price very often returns to. You can easily backtest the instrument you are trading and see when the price has not returned to the initial balance on a given day. The last concept we will include in SMC is sessions. Crypto markets operate 24 hours a day, but are divided into three primary sessions the Asian, European and North American sessions. These session times are based on universal coordinated time, GMT plus zero. And the same applies to legacy markets. US stock indices trade most during the US session. Even though trading of instruments like gold or crude oil is more evenly spread throughout the day, you can still use this technique. You can trade three actions to value area high or value area low or the levels with the highest volume. However, the main idea is something different. You can use the ATAS indicator named Sessions for this. Let's go to Indicators and place Sessions indicator at the chart. We need to adjust the color and time. Let's choose, for example, something gray. I will select white color with some transparency and change the time according to the 
time of the Asian session, which starts at midnight at zero o'clock and lasts till eight o'clock in the morning. So this is the Asia session. The main use of sessions in SMC is based on the premise that traders in Asia place their stop losses below the low and above the high range formed during the Asian sessions. So look at this area. This was the high of the Asia session and European traders immediately took off the liquidity above it. This is the low of the Asia session and the European traders moved the price downwards below Asia low, took out the liquidity and then initiated this massive movement up. Let's add another sessions to the chart. Let's go back to indicators and again adding sessions to the chart. Now we will set up the sessions for the European session. Let's change the color to green and set some transparency to it and set the beginning to 7 o'clock and ending to 15.30. And you see the similar thing on the next day. This is the low of Asian session. European traders took out the liquidity here and initiate the movement up. Same here. This was the high of Asia session prior to European opening. The liquidity was taken out here and here. And again, European traders initiate the movement below Asia low. So the main use of sessions in SMC is based on the premise that traders in Asia place their stop losses below the low and above the high range formed during the Asian sessions, just as European traders place stops below the low and above the high range formed during the European session. Sessions are closely related to liquidity, discussed in the second part of our mini-series. The European session, determined by the London Stock Exchange opening, often starts by hitting Asian stop losses. And it was the case here. This was the high of the Asian sessions and European traders immediately took out the liquidity. If you expect the trend to continue and you check the chart around the European session open, you can prepare to capture liquidity below the Asia low and then enter the position. On non-trading days, identified by a flat VWAP, you can even plan trades with liquidity capture on both sides of the range formed by the Asian session. In our mini-series, we've introduced techniques you can incorporate into your strategy or build an entirely new strategy around. You might be wondering, when should I enter trades? When testing an order block or capturing liquidity? How do you know where the price will turn in a fair value gap or if the entire gap can be closed? Trade entry confirmation techniques could fill an entire video and we may revisit this topic later. For now, let's cover a few basic techniques. I took this screenshot yesterday while watching the Nasdaq chart. So on the screen, you see the current action on one of the major stock indices. No scrolling through history and searching for a textbook example. I will explain you what attracted my attention. So first of all, I will draw this fair value gap here. I will adjust it. Okay, now you can see this double bottom here. I will draw a line here. So it was really interesting watching how the price broke through the level and created change of character. It was not able to create new high and break of structure for the upwards continuation. On the contrary, it created change of character. So at this moment, I draw this order block. It was the last positive candle prior to creating this high and moving downwards to the change of character. There was this reaction to the order block and this candle closed below it. This is basically the easiest entry confirmation. 
you anticipate the movement, you were expecting the price going downwards and you would have entered at closing of this candle. This is the simplest technique. You just wait for the first candle in the direction you want to trade. And then you open the position here, place your stop loss based on your backtesting on, or simply above the order block or this high and enter the short trade here. And here you wonder what you could have targeted. So there was an interesting rotation here. It could have been your first target. Then there are gaps during the very aggressive movement up, such as this one. This is yet another target. And perhaps this order block here. It's your target too. And when I unzoom the chart, you will see how strong the movement was and all targets could have been hit. But I'm going to show you more sophisticated ways of confirmation. You can engage a higher time frame. This was the one minute chart on the right and this is the five minute chart on the left. I will show you one very interesting and extremely simple indicator called Delta Turnaround. Delta indicates which party controls the market, if buyers or sellers. There was an uptrend and here, this arrow is very important. Buyers lost the control at this candle. When I pay attention to the time, you see that the next candle opened at 14.20, which is on the right side here. That's why I paid attention to the double bottom here and started drawing order block here. It was very probable that the price would develop downwards because the buyers lost the control. And if we want to engage even more sophisticated ways of confirmation, we can focus on cluster chart. Let's zoom in on this five minute chart and pay attention to the action at the top of the trend. I can go to chart settings and turn off the profile because we don't need it. And let's engage the maximum level. Let's change the border color to white and see what was happening. These white lines indicate the highest volume of each five minute candle. These candles in an uptrend closed above the highest volume of the candle, each of those. However, this red candle with the delta turnaround arrow closed below its VPOC, below its maximum level. This is yet another sign that the buyers had lost control of the market. So if you start engaging this quite simple technique, you will have yet another confirmation of the current trend development. And again, at the next candle opening at 14 hour 20, you see it down here, you could have waited at the lower time frame for another signs of the confirmation of the market development. I hope you enjoyed today's video tutorial. Subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated. Join us in the next tutorials on the Atas channel. Have a wonderful training day.